With that, it goes back to, uh, at this point, we're at the uh, discussion amongst the board. That also makes uh, questions still available to the applicant. Ms. White. Um, I just, and I don't know who can help me best with this. It may be Ms. Bushyhead or it may be Ms. Lynn, but I just want to understand. We're abating simply the real property taxes. And when we do that, assuming the project goes through, we're abating the real property taxes, but the personal property taxes and the sales taxes are going to go up, correct? The, the personal property taxes are based on the inventory in the stores and the fixtures and that sort of thing. Is that correct? That's correct. None of, none of the personal property taxes um, are abated and, and the sales, sales tax that, that we, the information that you provided last month on the sales taxes is the new sales tax that we at that location. Okay. Um, and while you're up there, I have one, um, mind you, I have never worked in a grocery store. I've never even sacked um, groceries if I can help it. But um, I'm just being honest. Do you pump your own gas? <laughs> that's <laughs> um, that, That's, well, I won't go into that. But anyway, my question is, on the employment data. Yes. Um, for full-time employees in a grocery store, I mean, do, do grocery stores function well that way? Is this normal? I was under, I guess I was under the impression <laughs> that there were gonna be more full-time employees. Um, when we started talking about full-time employees, I thought they were gonna be actually in the store. Um, so I think that's my misconception, Ms. Lynn. Is I'm, I'm going to share Blank okay. for put together the employment information. She interviewed the tenants, et cetera. So Great. you can probably answer employment questions for you. Thank you. I can't hear over here, Mr. Mayor. I can't hear their response. Back, back to your here. previous question, there's also going to be uh, tax on the land. So the, there's always going to be taxes paid on the land, regardless of whether this goes 12 years or 25 years. So in addition to the personal property tax, there's land tax. Okay. Personal property and the sales tax increase. As far as the jobs, when, when we filled out the original application, um, you'll notice that we put, we, we put permanent jobs on there. I don't think that we uh, discriminate or distinguish between full-time and part-time. So after the last meeting, we went back, back and, and felt like we needed to just further, you know, there was maybe a lot of assumptions in that. So we really wanted to get some concrete information. So we, we went and polled the existing tenants that we have to try to get the averages and then and took those numbers and applied them to our vacancy. Obviously, it, not knowing what our tenant, our new tenant mix is going to be, that's really the only way to come up with a fair number. So we used our, our existing, and that's how we came up with it. The 14, so originally Save a Lot had just said we had, had 16 <coughs> jobs that they were providing. Can everybody hear me? That they had 16 it would, it would jobs, and again, we didn't specify, and we should we overlooked that we had to specify whether they were full or part time. So once we went back to them, they have most Godfathers, for example, all three of their full time positions are management positions, and then in in, in some businesses, I, I think you know it's a way to reduce their overhead if they have more part time positions than than full time. Okay. But, but those, the, the current numbers that we have with the 50 and 25, I mean, we, we spoke to every tenant just last week. So these are, the, these are the actual current numbers according to either the property, the business owner or the manager or supervisor of each. And so, a couple other things I, I just want to maybe point out real quick. Um, you know, we've spent a lot of time on Save a Lot, and I, I think we've kind of expanded and, and talked a little more. This is about the whole shopping center. The shopping center size is 71,346 square feet. Um, we are renovating 44% of the shopping center. I mean, it's, it, so, I mean, that's, that's huge. It's almost half of the shopping center is being renovated. And to, to get it down to... 800,000, I mean, that's it's a good number. Um, 
our, the tanning salon closed, so our vacancy factor is up to 61.72% with that closing. So I think that puts us well into that definition of um, being underutilized. And this is just one way to, to just bring that back. And it doesn't just help, um, you know, our tenants. It, it helps that whole, the whole quadrant and the whole downtown. Um, and if I can continue, if the board will just indulge me. I don't think I have any more questions, but um, I, I have liked this project from the beginning. I have had some questions. Um, and, and I think on the employment side, I still have a question, but I think that can be addressed in our cooperative agreement. Um, but I do want to tell my other board members that um, it was the board of, of aldermen that declared the area blighted. Um, and we can see by the definition that we've gone over tonight that it truly is blighted. I mean, a vacant space that's being underutilized is blighted. Um, we put together the 353 tool, and I think it, it's up to us to make it accessible to people um, and not throw every roadblock in their way. It was just last summer when we sat down to put together our goals for the city that we talked about economic development. This is truly economic development. This helps not only that shopping center, but everyone along 63rd Street. I mean, this could be really huge. Um, we could sit around for a couple more years and wait for something different, but I don't think that's really feasible. I don't think that helps any of our downtown merchants. Um, I just want my fellow board members to know that there's a cooperative agreement. Once the 353 uh, is voted on tonight, let's assume it passes, there's still a cooperative agreement that we need to deal with. And any safeguards um, that we think are necessary for the city, we can add those to that cooperative agreement. And I think that's all I have to say. Very good, thank you. Shane, Mr. Um, Pardue. Yes, sir, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Unfortunately, I feel like I have to disagree with that, and, and this is the reason why uh, that I, I believe this. Um, with our 353s, it's usually fairly easy to, to have that mentality where we're investing, you know, level A, level B, but when we're dealing with a level C abatement, and we're also dealing with a, a business that, from many reports, is struggling, personally, it's scary to, to throw down a level C abatement on something that we're not getting an immediate uh, investment re return from, and, and I believe that this is something that we might not get. Uh, an example of that in Merriam, they, they invested in a circuit city and they gave it a big tax break, and now that circuit city is, went bankrupt. <laughs> the corporation went bankrupt, and there's a, a vacant circuit city in Merriam. The same thing could happen in a situation like this. I mean, it is vacant now, but it's not something we would have to abate property taxes for 25 years. It's something that I, I honestly don't feel comfortable doing tonight if it's something we would table and look into the numbers, but it doesn't seem like there's much room for negotiation with this. So that's where I'll be standing today. Let me ask a question, um, Ms. Lynn or Paul Campo. Um, <coughs> Mr. Pardue just raised a question about no immediate payback. Am I correct, though, in that there's immediate tax revenue coming off of this? sales tax revenue and immediate personal property tax revenue that comes off of this instantaneously. That's correct. So is there, is there a simple equation that also says for what we're abating on an annual basis, there's a projected amount of revenue, whether it be personal property tax, expected sales tax, that, that we could also show that, that uh, immediate payback? Uh. Mayor, we have not run those projections, but I think the applicant has run those in, in their spreadsheets, and I would defer to the applicant. Christine, please. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Pardew. Um, I guess we'll, we'll, to clarify what I was saying, there, it takes a, a little bit of time before they rehab this building. If it's under... Uh, issues with bankruptcy, it's possible it might not even be built. It might not even be finished and the business might even move in. I mean, there's, I'm not speaking, I'm talking about stable uh, economic return, not, that was my point, just to be clear. Okay. Help me out still with immediate 
With, with what the happens immune. on an annual basis from a projection as far as what <coughs> is being abated and what is expected <coughs> to be generating revenue. And this is from the spreadsheets that were provided to you on December 21st. Um, <clears throat> personal property. Uh, in year one, in, um, in year one, we're projecting the personal property, and we um, to be for the city, five hundred twenty-nine dollars. In, in twenty twelve, it goes up to a thousand dollars. So that's that's your on the personal property side. Um, in addition, um, the real estate taxes, um, the city will because you don't zero out the land. Um, this land f value is frozen. Again, so you're with the project in 353, you'll be getting $1,600 a year on your property taxes. Um, the sales tax number currently, the city is receiving approximately $42,000 um, at that location, you will be receiving um, $100,000 in year 2011, and we're projecting 159000 in 2012, and then 260000 in 2013. The reason for the difference is we're figuring a 36-month period of lease-up. So um, that's why we wanted, we're being very conservative. So that's an increase immediately in year one of $58,000 in Sales tax, um, one hundred thirty-seven thousand dollars in sales tax the next year, and two hundred thirty-eight thousand dollars in sales tax in year three. In immediately. It's so, in uh, in response to Mr. Pardue's question about, um, and, and Shane, do me a favor and ask Christine the question so I don't misinterpret it. Well, I, I think I, I didn't really have a question. I guess my statement was this company is there are reports of it of the corporation having issues. <coughs> Uh, financially, and then I'm afraid of us investing in a because this is investing in a business. This isn't investing in uh, blight removal. <clears throat> I believe that because level A and level B were investing in blight removal with, you know, twenty thousand dollars or ten thousand dollars, and the, it's cheaper to than to do that than to demolish the building. So when we're doing this, we're investing in their business plan. And so when we're investing in their business plan. I don't know if I want to invest in a, in, a, in a corporation that's being scrutinized now and looked at. And, I mean, I've heard reports of bankruptcy as well. I mean, that's something you can find uh, a lot of reports on. So do we want to go forward and, and abate taxes on a corporation such as this? So it's not a question. I, I don't need any more feedback from okay. them. But the abated, well. Go ahead. But the abatement is not, the abatement is not to, to save a lot. Well, first of all, we disagree with that perception. Sure, you do. You're trying to get the abatement. Well, actually, I think I think you know I think we presented some substantive evidence regarding the the status of super the super value company as well as Save a Lot. But regardless, the investment is happening, um, and um, the abatement goes to the property, which goes to the property owner. The abatement will cease if Save a Lot doesn't stay at that location. Okay, wait. The abatement will cease if Save a Lot doesn't stay in the in that That's spot or if the or the, if the uh, the rehab doesn't take place. Well that's part of the redevelopment. The, the, there's going to be consequences if we don't perform as we've represented here. And those consequences can result in us not having the abatement terminated on us. But so, you can still get tax dollars even if you don't finish it. You just won't get the entire abatement. No, we don't. We don't get our. T we the abatement doesn't start until the project's complete, so the the abatement doesn't get triggered until Save a Lot's there, and then once it's triggered, we only as long as we have to maintain or retain um, jobs, create jobs, whatever you know what the criteria of the program is, and if we don't do that, you can terminate prematurely terminate our abatement. But don't you get reimbursements, though, before the entire thing is paid out? You don't get any reimbursements. All we're doing is instead of writing a real estate, our, our real estate taxes check, our, per, our real estate taxes check, instead of writing a check for, say, $10,000, and this is small numbers, but just round numbers, $10,000, mm -hmm. we're writing a check for $3,000. That's an abatement. 
and the difference is an abatement. Right. But we, that's, that's our risk. If we don't, well, that's our risk, too, ma'am. If we don't perform, well, it is to a certain extent. <laughs> I understand extent, what an abatement well, is. If no hold, if hold, no do, me, do me a favor here. We've asked the question, and let's, let's be respectful of each other. I feel like other. we've had enough discussion with the applicant on this, though. Okay. I mean, honestly, I feel like I've asked my question. I didn't really have a question, though. Okay, thank you. Okay. All right. Ms. Ms. Bushy Hen, for my edification, yeah. you started answering the question. If we don't, if the project isn't completed, if Save a Lot never moves in to this development, the city has put out nothing. That's correct. Nothing. Right. The developer has. We have. The city's put out and nothing. And we'll have no tax abatement. And if they don't move in, you're no not in conformance with it, and the deal is done. Right. We city loses nothing. Right. And we lose at least three hundred fifty thousand okay. right. dollars. Thank you. Uh, there, there's nothing in any public information that has to do with published, government-approved audit people or whatever has ever talked about this company going bankrupt. And we're, I'd, I'd like to know where bankruptcy comes from because there's nothing in published information on it. <clears throat> A downgrade of bonds, if you did that, then most of the companies in this country would have problems with downgrade it probably bonds. probably won't do us any good to debate where the information is coming from or if they are or not at this point. Respectfully. Okay. Other questions from the board uh, or discussion? Mr. Yeah. Azure. Um I have a couple questions. Um, first of all, the abatement. Did that come from the taxes, uh, property taxes on the entire comp two block complex, or is that just the one half building that Save a, uh, save a Lot's going to move into? It's for, sorry, I'm going to jump in. Go it's ahead. for the three parcels that is the entire shopping center. Currently, the the shopping center is three parcels: the south section of the shopping center, the north section of the shopping center, and the actual driveway on the north end is a separate parcel. So it is three parcels that will be included in the project. Just as another clarification, the, the abatement does not take place until construction is complete on any 353 project. So whether that be uh, an pro other projects you saw listed in the presentation during the study session, abatement does not occur until after the construction, the project is complete. Yeah, that wasn't my question. My question was how much of the entire Center 63 is going to receive abatement? Now, you, I, what I took from your comment is that that, that development from end to end, all the way down from the license bureau to the top, is it three parcels? Is that what you said? Yes. And the so we're only talking are... about abating one parcel or all three? No, nope, we're doing all three. They will actually, the applicant will actually do a lot combination, assuming in, in the future, assuming everything moves forward. That's why they're in your packet. There's three Jackson County tax receipts. Right. And that's my point that I'm making here, is that uh, I think that's where the school district has a problem. Because we're not talking about helping save a lot move in. We're talking about abating property taxes on a huge shopping center. And that's where it's different. And, and I'll give you, for example, well, here, well, here's the next question. Um, the red, at the, on, on the, uh, this here that they gave us, the red represents money that they're going to spend. My question is, is that money that, that they will guarantee to spend? Or are they, that's an assumption they're going to spend it? I mean, that's a fair question. Because it makes a big difference, because you talk about how much money we're putting into it, and you're including the red. But we know, for example, we did a similar project that received city money also just down the street. And it was a big, beautiful housing project that's only half built. So there's never a guarantee that whatever an investor says they're going to build will be entirely built. So I go back to my question, is the red a guaranteed amount of money that this investor will spend on Center 63, or is it assumed that they will spend it? Christine, you want to take that one, please? That money is going to be spent as we get tenants. So if, as the tenants arrive, the money's going to be spent. So, and then you're an attorney, so that, I'm assuming that that's guaranteed. Uh, how is that guaranteed? Well, 
<laughs> no, there's no guarantee. Uh, there's risk involved in any capital investment. As I stated earlier, we are taking the bulk of the risk on the front end. We're putting our money out of pocket. So, no, there's no guarantee. But we're, we're, we're seasoned investors, I would say. We've done this for some years. Um, we're putting capital at risk to create a vibrant uh, environment. We believe this uh, tenant will help generate and make it attractive. First, to put the next tenant in right next to them. Because uh, we had some people express interest if they go in there, talk to us about that space. We think it's going to grow sales tax for the uh, that you're going to get from the other tenants. We think it's going to put customers in our other tenants too. So the answer is, quite honestly, simply, there's no guarantee. If things work in this, in this, how could we give a guarantee in this brutal economy that we're in? But as we can turn the corner as we come out of this recession and start getting tenants filling these things up, we'll then have the resources to execute our plan. So we're taking the risk. We're taking the investment to put our capital in to make this center vibrant. Okay? Uh, we, we think it's the right move for this area. We think your, uh, your redevelopment program is right. So uh, there's no guarantee, but we're going to be really in our power to make that happen. Okay, I, I want to continue here because much of the discussion has been talked about a grocery store. And a huge portion of the tax abatements coming off the entire center, uh, part of it which is rented by the government or private enterprise, both the license bureau and the area up above that. So I see a huge discrepancy of what we're willing to put into it and the school district too um, when we're talking about the red part and what you're not guaranteeing. I might mention, because I do go back longer than anybody on the board, and I do remember the Schnooks building that went up. And that was a tax abatement too. And I will tell you this, I, I vaguely, I don't know if anybody can remember this, and I might be wrong. I, probably Terry Landers could answer this, but I don't think, I think the school district was held harmless when they built the Schnooks grocery store, and the school district did not lose any money on that project. Um, I'm not positive, but uh, it was a huge concern to this community that the school district was held harmless. I beg to remember that. Um, it did close, by the way, and it, it, it was a uh, huge uh, thorn for every elected official and everybody that lived here because they were very angered by it. So we do know that grocery stores don't always succeed. Um, I, I, uh, I guess my concern, I, I guess my bottom line about the project is that we're giving a huge abatement for an entire project. I understand what the people that work down, have their buildings downtown, but um, I'm sure that, for example, when Pam Clark got her her tax money or, or her assistance that the Smith Brothers next door didn't get it because that's part of a complex. And, and you, you, you're talking about numbers. I mean, your numbers you gave us were for everybody all the way down the line. You know, all these jobs are going to, we're going to fill up these stores, there's going to be more jobs. It's all based upon assumptions. And, and I kind of agree. I mean, I, and I need to make a comment here, uh, Dr. Marcus' statement about um, cutting programs did not affect my, my decision here tonight, especially when he pointed it out. But uh, uh, I do understand where the school test was coming from because in every, you're going back for the past 15 years, every time huge projects have come up, we've always made sure that the school districts were held, and they're asking to sit down and just talk to you. And I guess my last question is, um, looking at the obverse question, um, that is, in saying that you want to see a vote tonight, are you saying that you would rather see it go down tonight rather than have the opportunity to sit down with the school district and try to work out a solution? Uh, no, that's not what we're saying. Well, we're saying that's the obverse. That's well, the obverse well, well, first of all, I want to also emphasize uh, the people who have the major risk in losing money in this deal is not the school, it's not the city, it's us, number one. Uh, we're putting most capital at risk, what we think is a plausible business plan. We're under the gun with this proposed tenant. We've tried for three years to find a tenant. We finally have found a national tenant who's put stipulations on us that they want to move forward. They want to get started. So we, we are not the one bringing the pressure. Uh, you know, we've, had, we've worked on this for a while. 
Uh, we're trying to make the economics of the deal work through this development redevelopment program. It helps us make the economics work. We're being a good tenant, but yet yeah, we do need to have a vote tonight so we can decide what we've got to do with our business. Uh, we're committed to put money in to make that business viable and bring it all back. It's not guaranteed. It's a risk. But the most risk is not on the school. It's not on the city. It's on us. We're putting the money up. That's it. So we feel strongly about it. I mean, what do you, what do, you do? Do, you, do you just let it go on and, and kind of bleed down, not help our tenants, and just keep bleed down for three more years? Or does somebody step up, take the courage, make the capital investment under a calculated risk? Because we believe this area is coming back. So I apologize that we can't table it, but I'm telling you know we're trying to make economic. It's not because we we don't want to table it. We don't wish any ill will to the school. We're trying to get this deal closed so we can get this ball rolling and move forward. Thank you. I do appreciate Thanks. that. I I'm not coming from the point that we don't respect that you are taking a risk, but it's a risk for everybody. Every individual that goes in the business, even to a homeowner that buys a house nowadays. They're at risk because they never, they're not guaranteed they're going to have a job. Or you're never guaranteed your business is going to actually make it. I vaguely remember back 25 years ago when I was in college that for every 10 companies that go into business, only one makes it. So, yeah, the risk is great. I don't think that's ever changed. I think it's probably the same true today, and I don't think every businessman ever gets a guarantee that they're going to survive if they do go into business. So I respect that you're, you're taking a risk. But I don't think that makes you a martyr. I think that's why people take a risk, because they can make money. And that's what this whole thing is about. It's about money in everybody's prop, uh, pocket. Mr. Thank Kramer. Um, yeah, mine is not so much question-oriented. It's more of a statement. And I, I, I kind of want to challenge my fellow board members. Of course, many of us grew up in Raytown and have been here for a long time. <clears throat> and we remember the Raytown Plaza. And the Raytown Plaza was a, a strong, viable uh, shopping center that, that we felt like it was just going to go on and on and on. But here we are in Raytown Plaza. We, we look at it, and somebody's trying to rehab that and put money into that and bring that center back. We've got another center here that these, these gentlemen, these investors in our community have kept up that property. Now, the outside of the property they kept up, they made points that there's no potholes in their, in, in their pavement, and I can attest to that. I go through that uh, quite often as a resident of Ward 1. I visit businesses down through there. And my question to you is, do you want another Raytown Plaza? And, and, and that's really what this is all about. We've got a 60% vacancy rate in, in a shopping center how long can these guys go on and, and invest in that property? That, that property is set vacant for three years. And we owe it to the people of our community. It's not just about the school district or it's not just about so-and-so. It's about the people of this community. And that's the bottom line. That's what we all sit up here and, and we have to make a decision on. We've got to make a decision based on the downtown business owners that have invested in our community. I grew up with Todd Glidewell. He made an investment in our community in Smith Brothers. It, it, it's a family-owned business that's passed down. And, and we heard testimony of, of reduced traffic since that shopping center, since the bridge. There's, there's many factors that have gone into this. Um, but my question to you is, do you want to see Clark's appliances there? Because without increased traffic, they're not going to be able to survive. Do you want to see Smith Brothers without increased traffic? They're not going to be able to survive. Godfather's Pizza, same thing. And it's, it's, it's about the, the people of this community and about them being able to be served by business. You know, we can argue and bicker about all this all we want to, but the bottom line is, is the bottom line. And, and where are we going to be if we don't approve this? Is it going to sit vacant in another three, four, five years to where those other downtown businesses are going to be? And ultimately, that's where you're going to make a decision. The abatement doesn't begin until the property is completed. We're going to have increased sales tax revenue. There's going to be other revenue streams that, that, that come in. 
for this, but but you know we got to make a decision. Do we want to revitalize Raytown? We've gone out and we've done everything we can to try to create a situation for business to prosper in this community, and then we're going to kick dirt on that idea. I, I think it's a bad idea. I really do. You know, bottom line is the the school district's not going to lose money. They're just not going to gain as much. Okay. And we have got to, we've got to make a decision based on that area over there, how well served it is, what do the people of that community want. So be careful in your decision. I want to continue with the first round here, and that goes to Pat next. Pat Ertz. Thank you, Mayor Bauer. Um, I want to go through, if, if I may, several things that, I, that would concern me on this. Um, Yes, we need to get something done in downtown. We need a grocer there. We need something for and I, something to bring traffic back down there. Um, save a lot might be a great thing for that too. I, I'm not sure. You spoke earlier tonight about if save a lot fails, the tax abatement ends. How is that worded in a cooperative agreement that? It, it, I assume that was going to be in a co cooperative agreement. Is that true? Uh, Alderman Ertz, we have not yet drafted that redevelopment agreement, but that point will certainly be provided for. So, so that would be in a cooperative agreement. Then, yes. Which makes me a little feel a little bit better having heard stories of of a. A tax abatement for a Snooks grocery store that left and the tax abatement went on. Um, so that would not happen in this case, is what you're saying. So, which is, that's a plus for me on this. I'm very appreciative that, that you listened to us last week and came back with $415,000 or so, or 18000 less. Uh, so uh, that, that definitely helps me. Also, now we're not being save a lot specific with our tax money in that uh, should the should save a lot leave and a clothing store comes in you're we're not tax abating refrigerators that are not going to be needed anymore and I think that's why <laughs> I draw the <laughs> distinction between a refrigerated display case and a heating and air conditioning unit as that would be um, so you're doing what I asked I guess last week is what I'm saying the school district is losing money on this right now already. I believe Jeremy Wilmoth might be able to tell us how low the, how much less the taxes has been on this property year after year. Um, I don't know if it's fair to say, but I believe it was a couple of hundred thousand dollars less than it was. Jeremy. Yes, um, I don't have the number in front of me, unfortunately, but what I did was a, an analysis of what the uh, assessed valuation was. Um, the last time Coddington's was a part of the, the property, and I believe it was around um, 900,000. Uh, the assessed valuation in, in 2010, when it was re reassessed by the assessor, uh, was under 700,000. It was about a 26% drop in assessed valuation. What I then did was uh, took the levy back in 2008 and extrapolated that had that been the levy for the assessed valuation in 2010, what the property taxes would have been back in 2008. And that was a, um, about a 36% drop in true dollars uh, that all governments lost. Uh, the school district was roughly about 26,000. The city was, I think, somewhere around 3,000. Um, going to the point of the applicant, and I, I think you know, logic would indicate that without that anchor tenant, the value of that property continues to decline. Um, and that, uh, I think that's something that does need to be uh, you know, discussed is is the the value of the property when they had an anchor tenant uh, was about thirty six percent higher than the value of the property today. Uh, thank you, and that's something I don't think has been brought up enough. Is that this is only going south on us right now? Um, we've gotten a better deal, uh, albeit it's still a lot of money. Um, as long as there's provisions made uh, for the tenant to be there uh, or that the abatement would go away should the tenant leave. It makes me feel better about 
the financial standings, and I found I found all kinds of things. It was hard to find anything good written about super value, about save a lot. They're a little bit different entity, and I agree with the owner when he says they're going to keep open the stores that are working for them, you know, even through a bankruptcy. They're, they're not going to get rid of their cash cow. So I don't, you know, that that's a little bit better there. Um, so the property taxes are going dropping now. We need a grocer in in that center. Uh, you know, I don't think anybody. I don't want to see us just doze it. You know, or, or which which is the direction that we would be going if we do nothing. Um, the uh, the Schnooks, you know, we, we we've we've solved that one with the in a co-op agreement that assuming that would be in there. The job numbers were disappointing from what we saw last week to go down an entire mall to get to that number. Um, that was a little bit shocking, in fact, that I, I thought 16 might have been a lot, but I sure thought it would be more than four or four time positions in that store. Um, it's, uh, I, I would love to have talked about this more. I know we do not have that luxury, and I do, I'm not blaming you for that or pressure on that. Um, I, I like the idea that it's going to only going to be 11 years instead of, uh, and uh, even with your conservative, than uh, 18 years. That's that's a significant savings for the taxpayers, and I think the board of aldermen could be proud that, you know, you've just knocked seven years off of a uh, tax abatement by, or questions last week. So, um, yeah, it's it's, <laughs> you know, it's. I don't like to see the school district go through any trouble. You know, I, I believe there's a, uh, as being the largest tax one, one in this, um, I'm glad to see that some money has been, been, been brought their way. Um, but I don't think we can wait three years for another one to come around. And I, uh, while I question the save a lot, I'm glad that this is a franchise store. From my understanding, they're quite a bit running on a different level than I'm not a franchise store. It's a corporate store rather than a franchise store. Um, I guess I, my only hope would be that uh, it, it does extremely well and the abatement goes off in less time. So that's where I'm leaning right now, at least. Thank right. you. Thanks, Mr. Ertz. I'm still on first round here. Bill, you're up next. Thank, <clears throat> thank you, Mr. Mayor. I guess I, one question I have, if... Uh, if we were to postpone our vote tonight and uh, move it on to a, a maybe a meeting in the future, maybe two weeks from now, uh, are you saying that this project is not going to occur if we do that? We, we can't guarantee that Save a Lot would stay in the game. Um, they've been very patient through this process. And I, I re somebody asked me last time if we could, you know, have Save-A-Lot here to speak on this. And, and, you know, one of the concerns is if Save-A-Lot gets the impression that there's pushback and that we don't want them here. So, I mean, we did ask them to come and talk about their business or why they want to be here because we don't want them to feel like there's any resistance. Um, because I, I think that in my experience in real estate, Time kills deals. Um, and, and this has, you know, we've been in negotiations for a long time. They knew this was contingent to a 353, but uh, they put us on a deadline. Um, there's a lot of vacant big boxes. Um, in, and one that comes to mind um, that's pretty close to here that I, I don't do representation for Save a Lot, but you know, I've worked with some other big boxes, so I kind of know what they look for in site selection. And, you know, Hobby Lobby relocated from Kansas City quadrant of 40 Highway in Noland and went to Independence. Well, that used to be an old checker store. So it, it just comes to mind that if they can't get a deal here, they've got a backup. And I don't know. They wouldn't disclose to us, of course, if they had a second or third choice. But I guarantee that they don't come into a market and, you know, they analyze everything that's available and they have their first, second, third picks and they go down the line. Um, they have, they want to open stores as much, you know, as often as they can. They can only do so many a year, but, they, you know, they're going to give up at a certain point. And, I, you know, I guess 
that's the risk that we'd be taking, and it's their decision, not ours. And we can't, it's really hard to speculate. I guess as a follow-up to that question, I would have to ask this. If this abatement did not occur, if we don't approve it, does that mean that absolutely this development would not take place? There, there's a high problem for you. Please. We have to have money to do this kind of project. To say that it will absolutely not happen, I'm not going to say that, but it's a high probability right now that it probably will not happen. We've got to go back to save a lot uh, because the whole thing was negotiated. They came to us with a, without the abatement. We put the abatement in. It changes their entire lease and their entire negotiation to do that. But to go back and go back to those original numbers, I don't think we can do what they want to do. Right. We'd be, going, we'd be having to go back and renegotiate rent numbers with them to, to try to figure out how to, how to cover these costs. The, there's a base rent on properties, and, and then any improvements over and above that have to be amortized over the term of the lease. So we, we'd be back at table one, and again, uh, I don't know that they'd be patient and renegotiate uh, the length of term, uh, the, the landlord improvements, and the rent. I, I, I just find that unlikely. But I really want to see this happen. I hope that we can make it happen uh, and that everyone can go away feeling good about it. Um, I don't know if that, that's going to take place or not. But, uh, you know, you were talking about lease agreements. How long of a lease agreement are you going to have with, with Save a Lot? It's a seven year term, is the initial term, and then they have four or five year options to renew. Uh, I would have liked to have seen someone here from Save a Lot, uh, and certainly, you know, it's not that we we don't want them here. We do want them here. We want this to go forward. We want to revitalize that shopping center. I think all of us want that. Uh, I don't think there's anyone in the community that doesn't want that. Uh, that would be good for us. And um, I guess one of my concerns is that. Uh, you know, in some situations, you, you don't have a clawback for uh, these businesses where they make a commitment for a specific number of years, and I, I would really like to see that where we're save a lot saying, hey, we'll stay there for, you know, five years, ten years, whatever it is, and uh, that, would, that would help a lot. Um, I... Uh, as one of our aldermen pointed out earlier, you know, there are situations certainly where businesses are built. And he was talking about the, the circuits, or was it Circuit City, I think, that was built over on the Kansas side. They built a brand new store, never opened the store. And, uh, you know, that did occur. Uh, those kinds of things can happen. Uh, you know, we'd hope that doesn't happen. Um, but I, I, w I would like to see some type of a, a, a commitment from Save a Lot, and uh, it sounds like we really don't have that other than you do have a, a lease agreement with them for specific. Now, I wish I could come in here and tell you that every business that we brought in here was going to succeed, but I can't bring one business here and guarantee that it's going to succeed. We are not operators of Save a Lot. We own real estate. Trying to build a center up is so that you'll motivate people like to save a lot to come in. Once you have a national attendant, tenant in these shopping centers, then it draws other businesses to them. Without a national name, you don't have it. There's no way to guarantee it. Who would have ever thought that General Motors would have happened? Who would have ever thought that AT&T fell through? You know, those companies were a huge company. They walked away from them. We can't guarantee that. I wish we could. But it's having a seven-year lease is about as good as you're going to That's better than you get in most markets. Okay. I, I did notice that with the renovation costs for the proposed Save-A-Lot project, uh, there were some items removed from last week and which brought that amount down, the refrigeration installation, refrigeration equipment, refrigeration display 
cases and coolers, which was significant and a significant amount. I, I'm curious I, if we would, if that would have still been included, which it isn't now. Would they have owned those if they left, or would they be left uh, when that tenant left? Would they leave them, or how would that work? Um, I don't don't have the full lease with me. I don't know the. I don't know the answer to that. I, I couldn't answer I, I, correctly if I tried. That would be a concern because if we're you know footing the bill for those and then right. at some point they do leave and they take them with them, then uh, whenever we uh, had in the essence, we had. saw the video that y'all had, had last time. <coughs> right. I'm glad those were taken out. Uh, that makes me feel a little bit better about the. You want to work it. He's, he's good for drinking a beer with too. <laughs> I have a couple other questions. Uh, just uh, in the renovation cost, specialties, miscellaneous, twelve thousand two seventy one. What what is that exactly? You know, uh, we didn't bring a construction person with us, although it was discussed. Um, I don't oh, have that in front of me. Well, we can trim that out, too. <laughs> and, you know, there may be some things on here. There's some contingency items on here. You know, we're, we're, we, can, we're, we only qualify for what we spend. So if those contingency numbers, there's things on here that if the, if the numbers are, up, you know, down or up a little bit, I mean, you know, you're, you're capping the, the abatement. Right at 800, but you know our contingencies could be below that, or that's you know those specialty numbers or things you're talking about. So, you know, there's a potential for the, for that to be even you know even a little bit less. I don't know if that makes a difference or not. But I mean, I just know that there's a lot of there was a lot of questions last time about contingency and numbers and what they mean. And I am not, I do not have a construction background. So okay. I don't the o the other one there, and maybe you can't answer that either. Is general conditions fifty nine thousand four hundred seventy dollars? What is that? <laughs> Good. Well, I'm out of my field there. I can. The only reason I can tell you this is that I think you actually asked that. You, you or someone yeah. may have asked that question last time, and I, I may have. And Audrey responded that that is the uh, contractor's fee. Okay. That that puts the superintendent on site. It, it pays right. for him, you know, to right. be there to monitor the supervise the project. That's the general contractor's right. general the conditions. General contractor's. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. <laughs> okay, that answers my questions. Okay, we're still on the first round. Um, anybody that is not that would like, and I, I want to say I think it's important. This is a very big deal for the city, so I, I would like to see each one of our aldermen weigh in on this subject one way or another. I've heard from six on the first round so far, and I, I got more coming. Who wants to go next, Steve? <laughs> Mr. Lightfoot, <laughs> Mr. Mock. <laughs> I have noticed in the last couple of years, you guys have done some improvements there, you know, on the lamps up to the parking lot, landscaping. I think landscaping was first. Uh, when I came in tonight, I didn't have a, you know, what am I trying to say, of uh, looking too forward to coming in tonight and going over this because of my uh, being through this throughout the years with Center 63, and I'd probably be one of the people in here would say, yes, I would like to see that center revitalized all the way like it was, without a doubt. Uh, I think there's a, a negotiating. When I came in and started looking at it tonight, uh, Got a little bit more impressive than I thought it was going to be, you know. And uh, we talk about uh, bringing back in businesses to Raytown, you know, putting people back downtown. I still can't get over the blight where they've taken the blight without seeing our downtown. You know, I don't know if you all understand this or not, but we're looking... 
where we've got a bunch of trees that we block our downtown, but we do put this with our downtown today. Um, so I've, uh, be honest with you, it's, uh, I've uh, had a change of heart on this thing. So uh, until then, I, there there is a question. It was uh, I was coming back from St. Louis this weekend, and uh, I saw a store, a Save a Lot store. It looked like it'd been an old grocery store, a center strips strip center there, and it's been split, just like you know, just like we're talking today. And this is out of, I think it was in Wentzville, Missouri. And uh, I saw the same thing I see at Center 63. You know, I just, I could see a blighted area too. And it made me think that, you know, Raytown is just that, not the only place. There's all kinds of different areas today that we need to revitalize. And in, in my heart, to see Center 63 even, even getting talked about today, to getting back to where it was again, is, is great. I look at the old Raytown Plaza, and there's, you know, certain things I see about that that, you know, the developer pretty well walked away. You guys haven't walked away. You've stuck it out. And I do thank you for that. So...